Hello? There it is, Steve. Uh, hope I didn't wake you up. I just came home and was wondering if everything worked out all right. Hi, Steve. Yes, we made the deadline. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I feel so bad you couldn't make it. Hope you guys had a nice Labor Day party. Oh, yes. I mean, the band was great, and Mike fell in the pool. <laughs> oh, and then Roy got really sick. No, wait, Brian. And then he fell in the pool, too. And... No, Roy. Uh, wait. Ah, well, I'll tell you all about it at work tomorrow morning. Well, <laughs> afternoon. I, I won't be there for two weeks, remember? Oh, wait, yeah. But, uh, but do you really have to? <laughs> two weeks is a lifetime. Yeah, Steve, I really have to. But I will continue testing for at it. Oh, okay, right, awesome. Um, you know, I better get some sleep now. My plane leaves early in the morning. Okay, Meredith, have a wonderful flight. I, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for picking me up, Mr. Coleman. Mr. Coleman? Please, just call me Frank. We're colleagues now, after all. Well, okay, Frank. Thanks so much for making time for me on Labor Day. No problem, Meredith. Postal workers always have each other's back. Your dad helped me dozens of times whenever I was in a bit of a pickle. Well, I hope I can fill his shoes. He hardly ever missed a day. I'm sure you'll do great. You know what? While we're en route, why don't we deliver some mail in our beautiful little lake town? And show me the ropes? Sure. All right then, get ready to roll. This lake, it's always more beautiful than I remember it. I don't think I'll ever get tired of driving around it. And there's our first stop. Okay, sir, what's the plan? Delivering mail is like a walk in the park, with mailboxes. Take this bag, walk to the mailbox, and insert the mail. You know what I really like about watching baseball? Not missing the first pitch. Ooh, interesting. Nothing too difficult, right? I think I should be able to face the challenge. <laughs> I bet. Didn't you go to MIT? Yeah. I left here from Massachusetts 22 years ago. Shouldn't you get a job in computers then? That's really booming right now. Well, actually, I'm... Um, uh... Hold that thought. We just arrived at our next address. It's a package this time, so you'll have to get it out of the back. Answer. I'm calling it a day. You're getting the hang of it. So, where were we? Computers. Should I buy one? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to use it for. Bookkeeping. I always make a mess of my tax returns. Can't a computer do that for me? 
Sure, there are programs for that, but you'll still have to put in some work yourself. I was afraid you were going to say that. I'll bug you about it another time. Our next address is right around the corner. Ah, there's no place like home. Sure isn't. Can't wait to get home either. The Mets are playing the Giants. Oh, before I get out, what time do I start tomorrow? 7 a.m. sharp. Just check in at the post office. Okay, Frank. See you tomorrow. Adios. Meredith, I just wanted to let you know that Dad and I landed safely. <sighs> the Florida weather is all they said it would be. I'll call again soon. Oh, oh, one more thing. The freezer's stuffed with food and there's blueberry pie in the fridge. Bye. Meredith, it's Steve. I didn't get the chance to say it earlier, but thanks so much for being a trooper. I know you had other plans for Labor Day weekend, but nailing the deadline for Ad at 87 could very well be the most important milestone in our company's history. Enjoy your well-deserved time off. Don't get too used to it. Just kidding. Or am I? Uh, I'll talk to you later. Good morning, Meredith. Ready for your first day? Good morning, Frank. Ready to rock. It's a great day to be on the road. I already filled up the mailbag in the truck, so you're good to go. Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's a map in the cabin, in case you get lost. <laughs> Thanks, I'll probably need that. Bon voyage! Can I help you? Hello, here's today's mail. Mm, new in town. Your face looks familiar. Well, I grew up here and then left for college 22 years ago. <sighs> 22 years ago, back when they called me Nancy Sinatra instead of Nancy Reagan. So now you're back, huh? I know what it's like. Actually, this is only temporary. <sighs> That's what I said too, a long time ago. I wonder if it's gonna rain today. It's been raining a lot lately. This is the old Sugarman place, but the envelope says McGill. Must have moved away. I'm actually enjoying this.
Moe's Diner. Wait, it's called Moe's Diner now? That's lighter than I thought. Meredith Wise? As I live and breathe. Come here, hon. Ah, uh, now, let me look at you. My, oh my. A few lines here and there, and the occasional gray hair. But my gosh, it's you, all right. Wow, Maureen, long time no see. I feel so old. Oh, don't be like that now. It suits you. Age only makes a person more distinguished, is what I always say. To the mirror. Now come here, tell me everything. But, Maureen, I do have work to do. I know you're busy, huh? Little Bird told me all about your temporary mail job already. News goes around pretty quickly around here. So, coffee? Something stronger? I warn you, I will not take no for an answer. Coffee sounds good. Thanks. Two coffee. Coming right up. And one piece of blueberry pie, if I remember correctly. You had one almost every afternoon after school at one point. Oh, you know me too well, Maureen. Always have, always will. Ashley, one blueberry pie. Oh, God, and Ashley, uh, could you keep an eye on the bar for me for a bit? I'm gonna take my break now. You're a real trooper. Ashley? Oh, sweet Mary, what are you doing? Ugh, is everything okay, hon? Oh, Lord have mercy. M maybe you should check that out. Honestly! First the roof, and now this? Ugh, that poor kid is like a disaster magnet. I'm sorry, Meredith. Looks like I've got my hands full for a bit. Next time, I want to hear everything, you hear? Uh, don't be a stranger now.
hello there, big cuddly guy. Genevieve, a new mailman. Hello there. What's your name then? Hi, Miss Jenkins, right? I'm Meredith. Meredith Weiss? Weiss, of course. You're Emily's girl, aren't you? This is Meryl Weiss, Genevieve. She used to live in town years and years ago. Twenty-two years, to be exact, but who's counting? <laughs> Has it been that long? That's almost oh, two Genevieves ago. <coughs> Calm down, Genevieve. You're going to live forever. She isn't, but shh. You do remember me, don't you? How could I forget Miss Mildred Jenkins? And her cats, of course. Seems like they've multiplied. Yes, I do like cats. Is that such a crime? So what if I have slightly more of them than I used to? Like Genevieve here, and Thomas, and Oliver. Anyway, did you have a package for me then? Yes, ma'am. I think it's a toy bear. I mean, it's shaped like one and feels plushy. Someone must think you need another animal in your life. Hmm. Bit of a nosy posy, aren't you? I know Frank would never feel up the packages. I apologize. I didn't mean to pry, Miss Jenkins. Hmm. Well, it's probably another gift from my son. Still doing everything to get into my good graces, except actually drop by. I'm sure he means well. He's probably just busy. Hmm. That's what he says. That's probably what you say to poor Emily, too. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. Run along, dear. Give Emily my best. Goodbye, Miss Jenkins. Genevieve. In a few days, I won't even need that map. in the truck. Hi there. I've got some mail for this address. You're not Frank. I'm Meredith Weiss. I'll be delivering your mail for a while. And Frank just gave you the keys to the goose? The goose? Yes. Your white and wobbly van, duh. I'm Lori. I'm Providence Oaks mechanic. And I'm the one who keeps the goose running. Well, Thomas is my father. Does that count? Thomas! Yes, that surely counts. My father has been teaching me since the day I was born. There is no one better in PO than me. And I have to get back to work now. But I suppose you may drive the goose. On one condition. If there's ever anything wrong with it, you bring it back to me, yes? All right. All right, I promise. Good. Perfect. Uh, did Frank tell you about the radio? No. It currently only receives the local station. Plus, sometimes it cuts out altogether. If that happens, just give it a big old bang on the dashboard and that should fix it right up. I'm working on it, I promise. Okay, 
Thanks, Lori. No problem, Miss W. Bear Creek again. Oh, right, Bear Creek near the old lumber yard. Yes, indeed. As of today, I'll be delivering the mail. Great. I'm Robert. Nice to meet you. Likewise. I'm Meredith. And here's your mail. Thanks. I'd better open this right away. Oh, what the... That doesn't sound good. Crap. That's what it sounds like. Bullcrap. Freshly baked bullcrap. Hey, the sound can't be worse than the smell. I'm sorry, but I have to take a better look at this. Have a nice day. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's Mom. How are you? How's the job? Hi, Mom. I'm doing great. It's so relaxing to be outside and drive around. Oh, that's great to hear. Dad says it's strange not having to drive the truck anymore. <laughs> I can imagine that. How is Dad? Can he handle all this freedom? Ugh. He went on two fishing boat trips already. And then there's the late night poker with his new buddies. Oh, I'm almost out of coins. I'm calling.
calling from a bar and Dad's ordering a margarita again. <laughs> Talk soon! The Countess and the Carpenter? <laughs> really, Mom? Oh, well, let's give it a read. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 1. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Schulten Brown. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstaben estate. She tumbled upside down, hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? Good morning, Providence Oaks. We're starting the day as we always do, with a PO positive or pet B, followed by the weather. Here. Oh, positive or that P. Dale, what's it gonna be? It's a positive all the way, Jack. I went to Moe's Diner yesterday, and I don't think I've ever had blueberry pie that tasted so good. Mm. Thank you much, Dale. That makes me want to get a piece right now. Welcome to the Flick Shack. How can I help you? Got a package for you, ma'am. Hold on. You're our new postal worker? Talk about not looking the part. <laughs> is that a compliment? Trust me, it definitely is. Well, thank you then. Name's Meredith, by the way. Meredith Weiss. Angie, Eastman. So, what brings you to Providence Oaks? Grew up here, and now I'm back to do my dad a favor. Ah, I myself have been here for six years. And what brings you here? Didn't grow up here, came to do myself a favor. Hmm. Touché, Mrs. Eastman. Miss. So your dream was to rent out videotapes? Not a dream, per se. More like a vision. Figured in a sleepy town like this, people don't have much to do anyways. Might as well watch a flick, right? Mm, you certainly have a lot of them. Choice is everything. Nothing quite tickles the imagination like the right movie at the right time. Hmm, maybe I should watch more movies. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Eastman. Uh, call me Angie. And here, someone just returned this and it should be right up your alley. The postman always rings twice? <laughs> My kind of humor. Well, I don't know anything else about you, Mrs. Temporary Postal Worker. <laughs> Miss, but touche, Angie. All right, I'll check it out if I have the time. Take your time. This isn't exactly the most popular flick in the shack. And there's plenty of choice, regardless. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Angie. Same here, Miss Meredith. Here's your mail.
Commander Grace, we have established communication with ground control. How do you wish to proceed? Tell them we've landed the rocket. Ground control, we have landed the rocket. We will now begin our experiments. Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute. Commander Grace, permission to explore? Permission granted. Yep, we're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure, here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait, what? Meredith? Guilty as charged. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Who are you? What? For real? You don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Wait a minute. Kay? Great. And now I busted my colander. I knew opening the door in this thing was a bad idea. Wow, I didn't expect to see you here. That makes two of us. Got me there. You've lived in Providence Oaks all this time? Don't sound so surprised. But yes, I married Barry. Evans, I'm sure you remember our high school star quarterback. Mom! Be right there, Commander Grace! Scanning for alien life forms. That's my little scientist back there. She's crazy about space travel, as you may have guessed, even after the whole Challenger thing. Sounds like you're doing great. I'm happy for you. Well, obviously a lot can happen in 22 years, so... I guess so. So, I heard you were back in town for a while, from Maureen. That's right. I ran into her yesterday at the diner. Your Uncle Stan wasn't there, unfortunately. I must have just missed him. Nope. It's Moe's diner now. Like I said, a lot of things happened while you were away. Also, I work there now, at the diner. That's great. Maybe I'll drop by sometime. Yeah, we'll see. Ready for a liftoff! Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time for this right now. Can't get stuck on the moon on my own, and I have to get ready for work. See you around, Em. <laughs> Good to see you, Kay. Evans! <laughs> Commander Grace, hold up! You'll never guess what I just found. You can say that again. Same handwriting as the one I delivered next door. I'm guessing... party invitations?
Mom and Dad have new neighbors. Siegler, huh? Don't think they ever mentioned them. Dear, so glad you could come by. Oh, it's quite the emergency. What's wrong, Miss Jenkins? It's poor little Mortimer. He's fallen ill, I think. One minute he was full of life, the next he, well, he just wasn't. He's almost catato... Sorry. Heard it when I said it. <laughs> Please, Meredith, be a dear and take poor Mortimer to Mr. Mackey. He runs the bait shop by the lake. He'll know what to do. Sure, I'll get right on it. Here, little kitty, come on. Wonderful. Be nice to Meredith, Mortimer. Don't shed too much hair in her van now. Bye, Miss Jenkins. Bye, Meredith. See you soon, Mortimer. Mr. Mackey, I know you're closed, but... What? I'm Meredith Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Meredith Weiss. Thomas, kid. I remember you running around the lake when you were yay high, getting into all sorts of trouble. What can I do you for? Mildred Jenkins tells me you know a lot about animals, and, well... Oh, hi there, little fellow. What's your name? Apparently it's Mortimer. Well, pleased to meet you, Mort. Hmm, he's a little sluggish. Has Millie been feeding him cupcakes again? But to be honest, I have no idea. <sighs> Leave him with me, I'll put him on a diet today. 
Maybe even catch him a fish if they're biting. With any luck, he should be up and running in the morning. Thank you, sir. By the way, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. You go back to running around that lake, Miss Weiss. Okay. Bye, Mr. Mackey. Bye, Mortimer. Used to think our Spanner Dam was just as big and famous as Hoover Dam. Then I visited Hoover Dam. Sir, parcel for you. Um, I hope I'm not disturbing, but here's a parcel for you. One minute, I'm busy. Okay, sir. Is that a parcel for me? Yes, sir. Oregon Trail Motel. You can just put it on the counter. All right, have a nice day.
Meredith, hi. Oh, hi, Steve. How are you? Busy as two peas. Added 87 is really getting there. Hey, listen, you've got plenty of time, right? Yeah, there's not much to do around here. Awesome, I need a favor. I sent a bunch of files your way. It's the retail pitch for Added 87. It's good, but not great. It needs your magic. Do you think you can add it? Huh? <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. How many pages are we talking about here? It's not much. It's just the pitch, and there's also an instruction booklet. Can't be more than 100 pages. I could just send it to your post office, right? I guess. Awesome. Mail it back to me as soon as possible. Priority mail. Thanks so much. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, Steve. Oh, one final thing. Now let this marinate. <clears throat> add it, 87. Add anything you like. It's fancy, right? Yeah, don't, don't, don't tell me now. Uh, I got a jet. Bye. <sighs> All right. Well, let's watch this. Steve's parcel. And a note from Tess. Hey, Em. Hope you're doing well. Steve told me you'd want to read through this monstrosity. Not sure if you really said that, but have a great time there anyways. Take care. Tess. Good morning, P.O. It's time for a P.O. Positive report. Okay, folks, let's see what it is today. The floor is yours, Angie. Good morning, Jack. I've got a pet peeve. Return videos that have not been rewinded. I mean, really? Be kind and rewind. Thanks. Duly noted, Angie. And now, on to today's weather. Hello again. More mail for me? And the tape you gave me. Oh, wow. You watched it already? A drifter in a sleepy town, an affair, and a plot to kill a husband? There's a lot more to this movie than I expected. It's a classic, and probably my favorite noir. They did a remake a couple years back, but it's, well... It's not as good. You can't beat Lana Turner's smoldering intensity. Yeah, she's great in it. I'm so glad you liked it. Most of the people here don't really appreciate the art of classic cinema. They just want to see Police Academy again. You're selling them short. Maybe. Just wish I wasn't the only movie buff around. You seem to enjoy being the expert, though. Are you saying I feel superior to these rubes? Because... <laughs> I guess I do a little. You know, it's good to see you. That's nice to hear. Because... I have a sneaky little plan. Oh, we're whispering now? I want you to meet me say, at, at five today. What? Like a date? <laughs> well, more like a business proposal. You in? All right. I'm in. Hurrah! I'll see you this afternoon. Wait, where are we meeting up? Your place. It's 102 New Street, right? Yes. How did you find that out? Looked up your last name in the Rolodex. 
Your parents are regular clients. I guess, but... It's settled then. See you at five, partner. This is close to where I had my first kiss.
There's a face I remember. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Hey there. More paperwork with my name on it? Well, take a look for yourself. Thanks. Oh, it gets worse every day. Sorry to hear that. Can you believe it? I've been taking care of this lakeside for years. And now they're gonna bulldoze it and build apartments. Oh, that's a shame. I'd hate to see the place I grew up ruined by an apartment building. What? You grew up here? Yes, my father was the mailman before me. Mr. Weiss. Ah, oh, so you're the prodigy he's always talking about. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. But tell me about that paperwork. They say you can file an official objection, but I'm not a great match with bureaucracy. I'd rather get the chainsaw and cut down town hall. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy now. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a nice thought, though. Well... Maybe I can help out. I'm better with paper than chainsaws. Would you? Awesome. I'll think about it. Have a great day. Good day, Mr. Harris. Hey, wait up. I'm done thinking about it. Maybe you'd want to go through all the files... Together? Tomorrow afternoon? At Moe's? Food and drinks on me. Hmm, sure. Who can say no to food and drinks at Moe's? Awesome. I'll see you there then. I'll bring all the paperwork. Okay. Bye.
Hi, Maureen. Hi, hon. How are you doing this fine day? I'm fine, but how are you? You know, with the kitchen exploding? Oh, that? Huh. Nothing a fresh lick of paint and a mop couldn't fix. Doesn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Let's pick up where we left off, shall we? And one piece of blueberry pie. Ashley, one blueberry pie. Meredith Wise, back in Providence Oaks. How's life treating you, darling? It's all right, actually. I delivered a package to Kay at her house earlier. Yeah, she told me. How did that go for you? It was a bit weird seeing her again. I can imagine it can be a lot to take in for the both of you, especially after being away for so long. Then again, there are some things that never change, right? You being one of them. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. But I bet the diner looks a bit strange to you, doesn't it? It looks so different from how I remember it. Yeah. I decided it was time for a change. Didn't feel the same after my stand died. World keeps turning. Gotta keep moving along with it, right? Oh my gosh, Maureen. Stan died? I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea. Thank you, darling. But it's really okay. It's been ten years already. Ten and a half, almost. Oh, boy, did I love that man. Oh, we've been married for so long. It hit me like a brick. But after a while, I decided that sadness wasn't the only emotion I was allowed to have. That's not what Stan would have wanted either. It sounds like you went through a lot. Thank you, hon. I do appreciate that. Anyway, you have to get back up. So I did. For me, but also for Kay. She took her uncle's death pretty hard. I can imagine that. <sighs> Sorry for dumping all that on you like that, darling. Gosh, look at your face. I'm a bit surprised you didn't know. Didn't your parents tell you about it? Or Kay? They might have. I've been so involved in work. Ah, uh, it's okay, hon. I honestly don't give a hoot about any blame game. We all have our lives to live, but Kay's been through a lot. Uh, nursed her uncle through his illness, helping me out. I think seeing you again shook her up a little, was all. She must have missed you during those days. I can imagine. It was good to see her again. I've missed her too. Then, it sounds like you know what to do. Listen, Meredith. Time marches on. And eventually, you realize it's marching across your face. Life's too short. That's exactly why I decided this place could do with a repurpose after Stan Pass. Fresh start. It's been Moe's Diner ever since. And believe it or not, business is better than ever. That's great to hear, Maureen. Congratulations. Why, thank you kindly. And listen, you check in with me and Kay again soon, you hear? Don't forget about what's important in life. Hand on my heart, I will return as soon as I have a delivery. Or sooner. Huh? I'll hold you to that. You bet. Bye, Maureen.
Hi there, Mr. Mackey. How's Mortimer? Oh, good day, Meredith. Mort's fine, as I expected. It was just a little indigestion. A good night's rest and a bit of lake trout in the morning has done the little critter a world of good. Excellent. Miss Jenkins will be pleased. Let me take him off your hands. All right. Bye, Mort. Anything else, Miss Weiss? Enjoying yourself so far? I'm having fun, yes. Well, that's good. I'm guessing I'll see you around a lot more, Miss Weiss. For sure, Mr. Mackey. Have a nice day. It's lighter than I thought. Nope, no answer. Look who's back. Mortimer! Oh, look at you! You're good as new! Yeah, Mr. Mackey did say not to feed him cupcakes. Hmm, I suppose he's right. It's, it's just that he likes them so much. Don't you, Mortimer? Anyway, thank you so much, Meredith. My pleasure. See you, Miss Jenkins. Call me Mildred, dear. Say goodbye to Meredith Mortimer.
No, Angie Eastman, you can't really create a woman with a computer. What movie is that? It's called Weird Science. You really haven't heard of it? It was a pretty big hit. I figured you, with your computer background... All right, I'll add it to the huge mental list I've been compiling ever since we started talking. So that's Weird Science, Life of Python... <laughs> Brian. Brian. Monty Python's Life of Brian. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't really look the part of a computer nerd, either. I'll take that as a compliment. Thanks. Well, I do kind of have a thing for nerds. But I'm also a sucker for someone in uniform. So I guess you tick multiple boxes. <laughs> so, any particular reason you're not at the nerd factory anymore? Let's just say I needed a change of scenery. Okay, well, I totally get wanting something different, anyway. I used to live in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Then, yeah. Providence Oaks is pretty different. <laughs> sure is. It's quieter, for one thing. Slower, for another. So tell me about this plan of yours. Is the suitcase part of it? Oh, right. It's simple. I want you to distribute movies all over Providence Oaks. You mean, for free? Yeah. You know the town, you're starting to know the people. Not all of them have VCRs yet, but that's why God invented movie boxes. And by God, I mean electronics companies. Look! It's a VCR in a box, and it's portable too, so you can take it to anyone. Wow. Never seen one of those before. I've made a list of potential customers and the movies I think they'll like. All you have to do is just deliver the movie box with a movie of their choice. Then you go and pick it back up once they've watched it. I don't know if I'm even allowed to do that. I mean, I'd be using the truck, which is Postal Service property. Um, you do know Frank is your boss, right? He's not exactly a stickler for the rules. Plus, it's only two to start. These are for Lori. You know her, right? The mechanic girl at the gas station, right? Yes, good. I have these two for her. The Love Bug and A Nightmare on Elm Street. This one is about murders in a bathtub, right? Well, not exactly. You'll just have to watch it. But not before Lori gets a chance. I think she'll love it. After Lori gives back the box, I have a couple movies planned for Burt Mackey. They are Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. And that's it for now. If you're in, that is. So, you in? All right. These addresses seem to be on my route anyway. I'm in. All right. Thanks a bunch, babe. Now, do you have any more of this great coffee? Actually, I really need to head back. Oh, what's the rush? I left the store unattended. Better get back. I understand. Talk to you soon? Absolutely. Bye, babe. Hello? Hey, Meredith. Hey, Dad! How's life? I heard something about poker, fishing, and margaritas. <laughs> Talk to Mom, huh? But yeah, can't complain. How about you? Do you like my job? I'm starting to love it. Being on the road, the freedom, the people. That's great to hear. Frank's quite the character, huh? Frank's quite the character indeed. He said you helped him out once. Uh, more than once. Well, what can I say? He likes baseball a bit too much. 
He places a bet every now and then. Nothing too serious. And what about Mildred Jenkins? Mildred likes to talk a lot. I sometimes postpone delivering her mail until she and her cats can't ambush me. Speaking of ambushes, your mom is telling me to hurry up. We're going to a movie. Okay, Dad, don't keep her waiting. What movie? Uh, Stand By Me. About four Oregon boys in the 50s. Right up my alley. Sounds good. Say hi to Mom for me. Will do. Bye, Meredith. Here we go. Rise and shine, P.O. The time has come for a... P.O. Positive for that team. Today's contribution is from Mildred, the senior authority on pets and people. It's so positive this time, Jack. Here's the mail, ma'am. One of those yellow parcels. Don't shoot the messenger. It's for that thing behind the door, a photography mini lab. They installed it last week and they want me to operate it. As if I don't have enough on my plate already. That's pretty nice, actually. I love photography. Some people think they can become professional photographers overnight. Yeah, that's a bit annoying. They want me to take pictures with the camera and film from this box so I can practice with the Mooney Lab. On top of running the store? Ugh. I guess I'll just have to deal with it myself. Have a nice day, ma'am. Interesting. Here's your mail.
Here's your mail. lighter than I thought. Hi Kay, delivery for the diner. Hey Meredith, sure, just uh, put it on the counter, would you? Kay, about the other day. What about it? How did things end up with the moon landing? Actually, I got stuck on the moon. But then I took a really big jump for the rocket and got back on board just in time. Grace voiced a few objections regarding the scientific accuracy of that move, but hey. <laughs> Grace sounds like a great kid. Yep. So... This is a bit awkward. Let me guess. You got a piece of Maureen's wisdom too, eh? Why doesn't that surprise me? That explains why she wanted me to take over today's shift, then. She told me about Uncle Stan. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It was a long time ago, but I appreciate it. It's not the same without him. Sorry I wasn't there for you and Maureen. That's kind of you to say, Meredith. I mean, I didn't contact you about it at the time, but then again, I 
had kind of given up by then. I guess everyone has their own things to deal with. Even me. I get it. There's always a reason for things to go the way they do. Thanks for understanding. Time marches on. What did Maureen always say about that again? One day you realize... It's, it's marching, marching across, across your across face! Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mo. Some things never change. You say that like it's a good thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Em. It was good. To talk, I mean. You know. Yeah, it was. I have to get back to it, but see you around, maybe? I'm sure. See ya. Hello, sir. I reckon that's a parcel with my name on it. If your name is Jack Reynolds, indeed. Indeed I am. And I reckon you're the new postal worker. Indeed I am. Well, thank you much. New around here, I reckon. People call me JR. I'm a farmer and DJ. I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you. DJ and Farmer? That's a rare combo. Indeed it is. But it's a nice distraction from Farmer. I've seen better times. I had some spare time and a room in the shed, so I figured, why not? About your playlist. It's really nice. Thanks. But I really need to add more songs. But I'm in the middle of a potato harvest. Don't have much time. Hey, listen. Postal worker Meredith? I need to get back to work. Can you do me a favor and give this envelope to Frank? Sure, no problem. Thank you so much.
Wait, where's the package? Hey, Miss W. Got some mail for me today? No, but I have something else. Angie from the Flick Shack asked me to deliver some movie boxes. She also asked me to deliver some to you. Oh, tight. What are the options? Let me see. The Love Bug or A Nightmare on Elm Street. You'll probably love that bug. I'm almost 16, Miss W. That's a kid's movie. Well, I watched it when I was in college. So you're saying it's an ancient kid's movie? Hey, I'm not that old. So you'll pick A Nightmare on Elm Street? Give me the love bug. I thought you didn't want that one. Ugh, I don't. But if my parents catch me watching Elm Street, they'll ground me for a week. I wish they'd just take a chill pill and see that I'm basically an adult. I fix cars. Oh no, that's too bad, Lori. Maybe you can watch it at a friend's house instead. No, I'm homeschooled. There aren't many teenagers here, as you may have noticed. So I don't really have any friends to watch it with. So it's a love bug for me. Tell you what, take the love bug now and we'll watch the horror movie at my place. Would Sunday work for you? What? Really? Yes, it would. That'd be wicked, Miss W. Of course. I'm always in for a good fright. So, see you Sunday? Totally. Thanks so much. Deal. Have a nice day. Well now, Meredith and Robert. Welcome to Moe's. Table for two? Hi, Maureen. Yes, please. A quiet one if possible. We've got work to do. Is that what they're calling it now? Speaking of work, Robert, someone reckoned they could fix the roof themselves and, uh, <clears throat> made it worse somehow. I mean, foot just went right through. No physical harm, thankfully. The roof! Yes. I promise to take a look at it. Uh, let me check out the damage real quick. Be right back. Thanks, darling. Hm, sure is one of the good ones right there. He seems very nice, but I haven't actually talked to him longer than ten minutes. What's time got to do with anything? You know what you want when you see it, hon. Oh, Maureen, please. What do you take me for? For a human being, of course. Don't go telling me city life turned you into a robot now. I don't buy it for a second. Anyway, let me show you to my nicest table. I hear the sun hits your face in all the right places here. Okay, so what you're saying is there's a couple of things we can do, but no chainsaws. Definitely no chainsaws for the moment. It's just that the remaining options will take time, effort, and patience. Well, that's one out of three for me. 
Can I get you lovebirds? Anything else? Maureen, really. I could always decide not to fix your roof today, you know. Don't worry, Robert. I know Maureen. I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> I could go for a glass of red wine, Maureen. Gotcha, hun. Robert? The same for me, please. Sure thing. Back in a jiff. Ashley! Did we get that wine order in last week? Hey, what? Glad we're finally done for today. But there's more to come. Do you think he'll manage? What do you think? To be honest, you probably need some extra help. Is that an offer? Yeah, sure. Okay, you two hard-working individuals, here you go. Thanks, Maureen. Cheers. So, how's life in PO so far? It's only been a week, but... So far, so good. Yeah, I've been here a bit longer. Time sure does fly. I'm sure you must have some good stories. Yeah, uh, look, Meredith, I'm sorry. I really better get started on fixing that roof. It's just, uh, that's quite a big job. While it's still light out and all, you know. So, thanks so much for your help. I mean, I really do appreciate it. Drive home safe. Uh, I'll see you around town. So, yeah, I'll see you. Everything okay over here? Yeah, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Good day. My name is Walter Morgan. I'm from the Postal Service. I'm calling with regards to compliance to policies and guidelines, such as the use of Postal Service property, code of conduct, and so on. I will be in touch again soon. Meredith, it's Steve. Oh, hi, Steve. Thanks so much for improving the text and sending it back to me. I'm confident this will improve our chances of securing a monster deal. It better help. It wasn't the most fun I've ever had. You won't regret it. It's a monster deal. The big retailer, big money, big prizes. A monster deal? That is so awesome. Big money, big prizes. Ooh, I need to calm down too. <laughs> well, yes. Calmness is needed. Eyes on the prize. The next steps are me going to meet up with them this week. Discuss terms. Okay, Steve. Good luck. Thanks, Meredith. Speak soon. Hmm. Let's see what's on TV tonight. Previously on Bon Appetit. I have good news. Jean-Paul has agreed to become the chef of the downtown restaurant. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Rock and roll. There is only one problem. Jean-Paul is not a cook, but a car technician. Good morning, Meredith. There's an envelope today with an incomplete address on it. It only says Mickey in June, Lake Campground, Providence Oaks. Do you think you can find that? Yeah, I think I know where that is. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Frank, I wanted to ask you something. I will not babysit Mildred's cats. <laughs> no, it's about something else. What's in those envelopes for you? 
Oh, that's just for stamps. Saves them the hassle of driving up here. Hey, I gotta get back to work. Catch you later. look at today's weather now. Leave it on the doorstep. answer. Here's your mail. Up a little too late. 
Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. Sweet. Good enough for me. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. See you Sunday. Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, uh, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. I know what you mean. Cool. Thanks. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. There's nothing wrong with a little weirdness. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. The dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? So, no news regarding those apartments? Nothing. Hallelujah. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wildcard plan. Wild card plan? Wild card plan. Yes. Also, highly confidential. Oh, come on. I won't tell a soul. Yeah, but no. Maybe later. It's still work in progress. Okay. Good luck with that. Thanks.
Here's your mail. I remember dad telling me, Meredith, the picnic area is for the older kids. Hello there. Hey, how are you? I may have mail for you. Is it addressed to Mickey or June? Or both? Uh, to both. Here you go. Sweet brother Damien, savior in the hour of darkness. Never mind him. He's a bit stressed out. We were a bit low on paper. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you too. Woo! What kind of paper? Probably a bit of cash and some rolling paper. <gasps> ah, that kind of paper. <laughs> No harm in that. Amen, sister. Thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. Nice RV, by the way. Is it yours? Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. We borrowed it. Joan! Can you get in here, please? Now! Oh, that's my cue. It was nice meeting you, sweet Meredith. Can you, like, not tell the authorities your whole life story?
Hi, Angie. Oh, hey. So, hey, I dropped off and picked up those movies. Right, right. Is everything okay? You don't seem your usual peppy self. You don't know me, Meredith, okay? This can be a stressful job. Okay. I know a thing or two about stressful jobs. I'll leave you be. Yeah, uh, actually, now's not a great time. There's two more movies on the counter. If you could deliver those, that'd be peachy. Hmm. Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. I'm on it. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Mm-hmm. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Mr. Mackey, I've got this movie box for you. Leave it on the porch of the cabin, could ya? I need to know if you prefer a war movie or a shark movie. Huh? Movies? Uh, just pick something. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. Jaws it is. Have a nice day.
Sam hits me, Kay. <laughs> wow, I just like instantly dialed your parents' number. Superpowers! <laughs> Probably just muscle memory or something like that, right? Or maybe it's like that thing where you smell something and it instantly triggers this mega old memory you didn't even know you had. Know what I mean? Oh man, I had that once when Barry bought me lilacs and the smell instantly mentally teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree. And I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that, right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go, must dial M, and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man. Anyway, I uh, didn't call about that, obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or be square. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter Two. Cecilia hated old Mr. Nabenshoe's table manners. The way he slurped rhubarb into his digestive system was quite the dampener on Cecilia's appetite. She wanted to get out of here and drink and dance with the common folk. Every night, she heard their merry noises travel through her bedroom window. The sounds of real life. Should I just come up? Come on up! You just have to watch your step on the third leg. Should be good. I completely got what you just said, and I'm coming up. Phew. I'm up in one piece. It's all good. Call off the dogs. <laughs> so glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here? <sighs> Brings back memories, doesn't it? Any memory in particular you're thinking of? Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan and they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. Oh man, what? I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I bet you don't. I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. And maybe now it's time for something different. Is it now? Providence Oak's different enough for you? Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? Uh -huh. 
I'm glad we can have these adult conversations now. Oh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? Did you end up going to college? Yeah, uh, about that. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing, make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. That sounds exciting. Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music, but I just couldn't let them down. So I stayed, helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. I can't imagine what it must have been like to make that choice. I see where you're going, but honestly, I count myself lucky in a way. It gave me time to assess. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. And what now? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan. But I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. They basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's been tough, but looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? <sighs> so, ready to descend to the world below? Yeah, seems like it's time. Come on, then. Hello? You are speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? Hey, Steve. You're in a good mood? Meredith, please, tell me to calm down. We are so close to a deal. At it 87, in shops all across America. m m m m monster deal Oh, wow, that is so awesome. Tell me more. Okay, okay, I met up with this big retailer, right? They read our great pitch. They loved it, and they want to buy 250,000 copies of At It 87. 200 and 50,000. Multiply that by like 35 bucks. What? That's millions of dollars of revenue. M -m -m millions and and it's just the start. 
Listen, I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please, check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? Gotcha, Steve. Don't worry about it. Awesome. I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing. Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You weren't scared at all? Nope, told you. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16, and yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but it's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Oaks. And I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. And your parents don't let you watch horror movies? Exactly. It's so frustrating. They want me to work in my dad's shop once I'm done with school. And I'm just not sure if I want that, you know? And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh. Well, maybe. I think... Maybe once you're done with school, you can start traveling. Go out and see the world, like you said you wanted. Meet new people, do new things. Be a free spirit. I think that could be cool, too. But I'd have to get my license first. And a car. But I guess I can save up money while I'm working for my dad anyway. And I've always wanted to see the Smithsonian Museum. Oh, oh, or Sequoia National Park in Cali. See, plenty of stuff just waiting out there for you to come and visit. You have two years left of high school, more than enough time to get your license and save up for a car. You're right, Meredith. Thank you. Also for talking to me and stuff. You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later! Oh, Steve's parcel. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really, I must admit the energy here is contagious. Is Adit actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Ah, yes, I remember. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office, I would like to ask you a few questions. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? To be honest, no. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase, it is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Oh. Okay, sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here, but I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes, sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? Yes. 
Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? No. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. What's going to happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss Weiss. Top of the morning, P.O. Complaints in Monday mornings. The perfect combo. P.O. Positive for that key. Take it away, Bert. Morning, JR. I'm afraid it's a pet peeve from me again. People who come camping here outside the season just bugger off already. <laughs> Loud and clear, Bert. Just like today's weather. I'll leave it on the doorstep. Hi there, Meredith. I suppose you've come to pick up that VCR thing you dropped off earlier. The movie box? Yes. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, I did. It took some figuring out how to hook it up to my old TV set, but I got it to work. Good watch. Shark looked a bit fake, though. I saw it in the theater at the time. Pretty exciting. So anyway, Angie over at the Flick Shack hopes this entices you to visit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe I'll drop in one day. Well, you gotta get it back to work. Hey, here's the package. Thanks. See you around.
Sweet Meredith. Hi there. Here's the mail. Thanks. Still enjoying life off the grid? Sure am. Although Mickey had a rough night. Said he had hallucinations of rotten fish in the RV. Did he have too much of the stuff that makes you feel funny? Well, actually, when I went outside this morning, there was this huge rotting lake trout right below our window. Totally grossed me out. How does something like that end up there? Ew, disgusting. I have no idea how that happened. Oh, hold on, Mickey's gotta read this. <laughs> Mickey, wake up, honey. Leave me alone, I'm still shit-faced. It's a letter from Damien. Oh. Right, yeah, okay. Give me that. Looks like we won't be here much longer. Oh, really? Where are you going? We're going to Canada. We will be picked up this Thursday, early in the morning. What about the RV? Joan? Are you running your mouth again? I'm sorry, sweet Meredith. Gotta go. Hey, you know what? You should come by Wednesday. Our last night here. We'll build a campfire, have a drink, maybe a puff or two. You know, and talk about the meaning of life, of course. The complete outdoors experience. Gee, I don't know, June. June? Oh, please, sweet Meredith. I gotta run now. Be here Wednesday after sundown.
Hello? Sir? It's the mail. Excuse me, what's this all about? Oh, I thought I'd not bother you and just deliver the parcel. I'd appreciate it if parcels are not just dumped on the counter. I'd appreciate it if you'd act like a human being. You'd understand if you had any idea about what I'm trying to do here. Setting up a computer system to handle all the bookings is quite sophisticated. Are you sure you're not just playing a game? Yeah, I'm sure. Thanks for the mail. Bye. Hey, 
Here's your movie box back. Oh, thanks so much, babe. Listen, I owe you an apology. Apology? For what? I was Kurt. Just plain Kurt. And here you are delivering movies for me. You deserve better. Apology accepted. Let's move on. So, any idea what caused it? Business is slow. More than slow. I mean, the Flick Shack is in real trouble. That movie box kind of was my last-ditch marketing effort. Nothing's worked so far. I'm sure it'll be fine. Chin up. Anyway, enough whining. Let me make up for my stupid behavior and reward you for your diligent movie fairying, my lady. Reward me? Yep. I've got... Ta-da! Coupons! They're one of the few perks this job has. I get to take myself and a plus one to a free movie of my choice at the new cinema in Astoria. Valid tonight only. What? You mean like a date? Oh, you post people in your labels. But hey, if you want to call it that, sure. So what'll it be, Missy? You in or you out? Sorry, um, I... Aw, you're no fun. Guess I'll ask Lori or something. Great. She'll love it. Anyway, gotta get back to it. Bye. Bye. Hello? Hey, Meredith. How was your day at the office? Uh, I mean, mail truck. Oh, hey, Dad. Actually, it did start at the office. I was being interrogated. Interrogated? What? By whom? Walter Morgan, a higher up from the Post Service. He started asking questions about code of conduct. And about Frank. Uh, Morgan, that walking corpse. He's always after Frank. What did you say? Nothing, basically. That's my girl. They'll never catch Frank anyways. He's always one step ahead of them. Listen, Mom's poking me. I guess we're not allowed to talk about work. Uh, here she comes. Bye, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Was Dad trying to get work stories out of you? Hi, Mom. Yep, you tried. And he succeeded. It was a weird day. Well, I'm changing the subject right now. Have you met the new guy at the hotel yet, Matt? Yeah, I met him the other day. He's, uh, a unique character. Unique? <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. He's one of the reasons why I won't miss working at the hotel. Anyway, how's life in good old P.O.? It's nice. I met some interesting people. That's good to hear. Interesting people. Do you mean interesting, interesting, or just interesting? I mean just interesting. What do you mean? You know what I mean. It's been a while since you've met someone interesting. That's right. And now I'm changing the subject. Do you miss Providence Oaks? 
Oh, Florida is fantastic. I think I might actually want to live here. The warmth of the sun, it's very easy to get used to. Oh, Dad is telling me to get back. Looks like the bar's open. Wonder what he's ordering this time. I'll get an Alabama slammer. <laughs> Alabama what? Alabama slammers! Cheers! go again. Meredith, can I bug you for a second? Sure, Frank. What's up? That Walter Morgan guy. Uh, what did he want from you? He was asking all sorts of questions. Also about you, Frank. God damn it! Can you believe that jerk? Are you in trouble, Frank? Trouble? Eh, they're the ones who are in trouble. I gotta get back to it, Meredith. Have a great day. Oh, before I forget, that Robert Harris guy was here this morning, looking for you. He asked if you could drop by. He's working somewhere in the forest today. Answer. you. Hi. How was the movie night with Lori? Oh, um, I, I ended up not going. Oh, well, maybe another time, right? Yeah, we'll see. So, how are you? Well, there's something I want to talk about. Oh, what is it? We should talk about... us. Well, I like you, but I think we should just be friends. I see. I, ca I came on a little too strong. It's been known to happen. I do like you, just not in that way. Gotcha. Friends it is. So anyway, what's on your mind? Seems I caught you in a rare moment of quiet contemplation. <sighs> yeah, uh, I just... You ever get the feeling you're not where you need to be? 
You feel that way about Providence Oaks? It's just that this whole Flick Shack adventure, I think it was the right idea at the wrong time. Wow. Is business that bad? Ah, and here I was hoping our movie box project would turn things around. <laughs> it almost did. Don't think that it didn't help. That's what I mean with the wrong time. I'm sure video will be huge. But it isn't. Not yet. Not here, anyway. So you're leaving? Yeah. Yes, I am. Wow. I, I didn't realize until just now that I'd already made my mind up. But I guess I have. I'm leaving. Gosh, it feels so liberating to say. Oh, there it is. How about you? Have you made your mind up yet? About your future, I mean? Me? No, not yet. Well, take your time. I want to give it my full attention when you do decide. And right now, I really have to start organizing the grand closing of the Flick Shack. We hardly knew ye. I hear ya. I'll swing by later. Hmm. I guess nobody's home. Alright, I'll leave it on the doorstep.
stuff. Interesting. for you I thought I might as well give it to you now instead of you know waiting till you're home oh thanks that's super amazing thank you um what is it oh my god I'm so excited about this Yay! I see this is a guessing game all right is it a Bunch of copies of the E.T. game? Ugh, I hope not. Okay. The suspense is killing me. Open it! Okay, you ready? It's actually a Yamaha DX7 synthesizer! Oh man, I am super stoked this arrived so soon! I got this amazing deal on it through the classifieds. This old guy was selling it. Apparently he had never really used it. I mean, what? Can you imagine owning something like this and not using it every moment you get? I mean, this synth is used everywhere these days, so I was like, yes, this is mine! <laughs> Sorry, I can get carried away about this kind of stuff. No kidding. To be honest, you lost me around the time you opened the box. But if it works like a computer, sign me up. Computers, eh? Oh, wait, are you a programmer? Because if you are, you should totally check out the Insonic Mirage. Stop, you're doing it again. Oh man, you're right. Listen, Em, I totally owe you for lugging this around for me. Now, what will you have? It's on the house. Pie. I mean, I'd love some blueberry pie if you have it. Oh, I just sold the last slice. We're clean out. Anything else? Nah, I'm good. I owe you, it is. Apparently, I have some baking to get started on now. But good to see you, and thanks again. No problem. Have fun with your synthesizer. Yes, thanks.
I didn't bring the package. I guess nobody's home. All right, on to the next one. Hey, Meredith, I'm up here. Hey, Robert. Wow, that's really high. What? I can't hear you. Maybe you should come down. Sorry, I can't hear you. Maybe I should come down first. Can you hear me now? Hi, Meredith. Hi, Robert. That's better indeed. Thanks for coming out here. This arborist job came up suddenly. Yikes. I'm glad there's people like you for that. It's great up there. I used to climb a lot. Still do, actually. But now I get paid for it, too. Anyways. I figure it would also be good for you to see where the apartments are planned. Ah, okay. So, what now? Well, I want you to listen to my wild card plan. Tell me all about it. I've scheduled a recording session at a professional sound studio. Get out of here! Are we gonna do a tree version of We Are The World? Yes, I could do Bruce. We are the world. 
We are the children. That sounds great. I'll be... Cindy Lauper. Well, 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 let us realize all that a change can only come. Oh, yes. But no. Sorry. It'll be a radio message to get the people of Providence Oaks involved. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Probably better that way. Yeah, leave the singing to the pros. It'll be this afternoon, by the way, at Jack Reynolds' barn. Are you in? I can use an extra set of ears. A professional sound studio, huh? Okay, I'm in. Great. Meet me there after work. I gotta get back up in this tree now. See you later. Bye. Be careful up there. Thanks. We are the ones to make a brighter day. So let's start giving. Okay, folks, it's showtime. Robert, are you ready? Yes, but before we start, I'm not a pro, so please bear with me. You'll do great. Okay, Robert, take it away. <clears throat> Fellow Providence Okians, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Perfect. That's a wrap, folks. Back to work. Hold on. Hold on, Jack. Meredith, what do you think? Yeah, I guess this is okay. Are you sure? Jack, can you play it back for us? All right. Here it comes. Fellow Providence Okians, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. I'm not totally convinced yet. How about... Dear people of Providence Oaks. Okay, let's try that. Jack? Sure, Robert. Here we go in one, two, three, action. <clears throat> Dear people of Providence Oaks, I'm Robert Harris, 
and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Better? Better, yes, but it also needs more passion. Say it like you mean it. Yeah, Robert, if you could hurry up a bit. Potatoes don't come out of the ground voluntarily. One, two, three, action! <clears throat> Dear people of Providence Oaks, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Like that? A star is born. Now, let's do some real work. All right, this should work. All right. It's time to really roll up our sleeves. You ready, Robert? Sure thing, Jack. Meredith, I'm gonna return the favor and help Jack out today. If you lovebirds want to spend more time together, she can come along too. Plenty of work to do. Jack, what the... Nothing wrong with a bit of hard work outdoors. Let's go. Rock on. Let's do this. Okay, folks. Hop on my tractor. It's time for the real show. Meredith, it's me. Oh, hi, Steve. I checked the contract. I didn't see any funny stuff. Looks like smooth sailing to me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, short call. Got a rush. Corporate lawyer appointment. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. You speak soon. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 3. Come in, were the most regretted words Cecilia had uttered in a long time. They were instantly followed up by, Get out! when she saw the surprised face of the carpenter's apprentice, instead of her niece, Anna. Apparently, her hosts wasted no time in addressing the problem of a malfunctioning bathroom faucet. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Good morning, Mr. Morning. I need to inform you that your colleague Frank Coleman has been suspended. Frank? Suspended? Why? The only thing you need to know right now is that I will be filling his spot for the time being. All right. But where is Frank now? Frank is not here. But I'm a little worried about him. Where is he if he's not here? Somewhere else. Have a nice day, Miss Weiss. Providence Oaks, good morning to you! Theo, positive report. That's he. Today's contribution is from Matt Turney. I have a positive. Last night's thunderstorm over the lake, what a spectacle. I'm glad my barn's still standing, but thanks for calling in, Matt. Ooh, interesting. What's this? The Flick Shack has closed down and will not reopen. 
Any unreturned tapes can be dropped off before September 22nd. It has been a privilege to serve as Providence Oaks' premier home cinema provider. Thank you for your patronage. All the best. Your Flick Shack proprietor, Angie. Hmm. Interesting. heavier than I thought. Are you here to help out with the camera? Yes. I think I'd like to give it a try. It's hard to pass up free stuff, right? Here you go, and good luck. Take pictures until the camera roll is full, and then return it to me.
Hi, Maureen. P.O. people, I need to pause the music for a special message. Uh, hush, darling. I want to hear this. And so do you. It's from our own Robert Harris, who wants to keep Providence Oaks pretty. Uh, don't flatter yourself. He's talking about the trees. Take it away, Robert. Dear people of Providence Oaks, I'm, I'm Robert, Robert Harris, Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Isn't that something? It could have been more juicy, I guess. But it does say exactly what he wants it to, which is rare for our Robert. Even though he does have his redeeming qualities, doesn't he just? I wonder how he came up with the idea, though. Actually, I helped out a bit when he was recording it at Jack's studio. Is that right? Now, Maureen, don't Maureen this out of proportion. I see. Robert wasn't kidding when he said uh, he wants to keep pretty things around in Providence Oaks now, was he? You think so? Well, that's what I heard. Anyway, I actually wanted to talk to you about something else. What are you doing this Sunday evening, hon? Something tells me I'm about to find out. You know it. Listen here. I'm hosting a very special first time open mic night this upcoming Sunday. We'll have some drinks, some food, discover the town's hidden talent or not, if you know what I mean. It'll be a hoot. More like a hoot and a half. Count me in. Good. I already had you down on my list, of course, but it's nice of you to RSVP. That's settled then. I will see you this Sunday at 8 p.m. And tell everyone you meet, okay? Let me see you put those postal delivery muscles to good use. Let's just say I'll do my best. There you go. You're catching up. Now I have to go unpack some deliveries out back. But I will see you soon, darling. And don't forget about the open mic. I couldn't if I wanted to. Mail carrier Meredith. Farmer Jack. Good to see at least someone's working today. As opposed to you? Yep. Can't harvest taters with all this rain. Luckily, rags keeping me busy. You spoke to him? Yeah, just talked to him on the phone. He's mad as a wet hand. It's quite entertaining, actually. Thanks for dropping by, mail carrier Meredith. I gotta get back to it.
Isn't it well past harvesting season? True enough, but uh, something else is keeping me occupied. Oh, okay. Good luck with that. Thank you much. answer. That's the last of them.
Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's me. Oh, hi, Dad. What's up? The sun is up, the sky is blue. Life's good here. That's great to hear. Yeah, we're so happy we finally took the trip. Why haven't you told her yet? Let me talk to her. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Weiss. Meredith, sorry to break it up. Your mom wants to talk to you. Meredith, I'm so excited. Your dad and I found this cottage this weekend near the beach. It's so pretty. Not too big, but who wants to be inside anyway? Wow, that sounds great. What's the plan? Live there? Yes. We talked to the owner. We can rent it for the time being, spend the winter here. And if we like it, we can buy it and settle down here for good. Awesome! I'm so happy for you. Isn't it something? And uh, it means that our house will be vacant for a while. We won't put it on the market until we've tried out Florida for a few months. So, um, if you want to extend your stay in Providence Oaks... Are you serious? I'm pretty serious, yes. But uh, it's a pretty big deal, so just think about it for now. Hmm? Can I talk to her for a sec again? Yeah, here comes your dad again. Bye, dear. I'm going to get us something bubbly. Hey, Meredith. Just wanted to say that I'll call again at the end of this week. Have a great one. Okay. Bye, Dad. Memories, memories, memories of you. <laughs> that was so deep. Right, Meredith? Wow, yeah. Awesome. It's in the darkness when my soul stars align and, and illuminate the real me. Oh, baby, I'm so happy for you. We, we need to celebrate this moment. I I'll be right back, ladies. Mickey can be difficult sometimes, but nights like these... I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but with him. And that's why you're following him all the way to Canada? It's also that he needs me. He would get into trouble without me. Is she interrogating you again, June? Oh, Mickey. Be nice to sweet Meredith. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. Uh, sorry for being a hard ass the other day, Meredith. It's just that we need to be a bit cautious. It's okay, Mickey. I've had worse, delivering mail. Delivering mail for the man? I couldn't do that. The man? What man? The man, you know, in general. Anything with authority, in whatever shape or form it appears. I hate to be a square, but sometimes I think a little authority is useful. Hey, guys, let's not spoil this evening with heavy stuff, okay? Ah, you're so right, Junebug. Who cares about the man when I've got you? There's something that'll make you feel lighter. Much lighter. <coughs> Meredith! Sure. My turn. How about some booze? Sure. What do you have? Beer, wine, and whiskey. Beer. Gotcha. Be right back. Memories. Memories. Memories.
of you and and me. Memory. All right, it. Here you go. So, are you guys on the run? What can I say? We've got a few unpaid parking tickets. Mickey had an argument with some cop, and then there's a bit of college and tax debt. Nothing major. So we're not really on the run. It's more like speed walking. I'm sure you'll have more peace in Canada. I hope you guys will be happy there. It's so exciting. Damien will pick us up with his Jeep tomorrow morning. We'll have a cozy hour under the blanket, swim across the border, and then we're good. Hey, I just realized we're abandoning the RV. You should totally have it. Mickey, can Meredith have the RV? What piece of junk? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Thanks, but no thanks. One oversized vehicle is enough for me. Are you sure? You should try going off the grid. Experience real freedom. Whatever you decide, we'll leave it at the gas station. That's where we rendezvous with Damien. Wild. Memories, memories, memories of you. Have time for the weather. Speaking of, Interesting. First, did these folks order? Nope. No 
answer. a sight for sore eyes. Oh, hi, Miss J... Mildred. How so? Is something wrong with the cats again? It's just... this week. It's all a bit much for me. I need to get my hair done for Sunday's special evening, but I can't leave my cats alone. And then all of a sudden, Frank has gone missing. He still needs to bring me an envelope. Please tell me that you have it with you. I'm afraid this is just a postcard. But what do you mean he needs to bring you an envelope? Oh, don't be a nosy posy, Meredith. Oh dear, oh dear. He can't just have vanished into thin air, can he? I wish I could tell you where he is. Oh, Frankie boy. Always making me worry too much. And I need to cancel the hairdresser's appointment. But what if I can't reschedule? Oh, don't worry about it. Your hair looks just fine. No, no, no. My hair looks like a mess. I can't go out and about looking like this. Yes. Sure you can, Mildred. I'm sorry, but I have to be on my way again. Oh dear, oh dear. I need to go inside and calm down a bit. on wheels. I have no idea where it came from, but it's absolutely rad. It was left here by Mickey and June, that young couple by the lake campground. Oh, really? And now what? They told me I could have it if I want. But I don't. 
I can give it to you instead, if you want it. You know, keep it here and tinker on it. Oh, yes, that'd be amazing. You know I love tinkering, but it's going to need a lot of work. Good to hear, Lori. I can already hear the cogs in your head spinning at top speed. What are your plans? Well, if it's going to be here a while, I should give it a name first. Can't have such a beautiful vehicle and not give it a name. How about the Sea Turtle? Big, slow, washed up, just like a turtle. Or the Raccoon, because it's got brown spots and is full of trash. Or the Hermit Shell. It had many owners over the years, just like the shell of a hermit crab. I like... The Hermit Shell. Good choice. I'll get working on it right away. See you later. Bye. heavier than I thought. Ah, yes, yes, yes. He could only look on in sheer terror as Madeline threw the key straight into the lake. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is good stuff. Excuse me, sir? No, oh, for Christ's sakes, go away! If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times! You must have me confused with someone else, sir. No, oh, bloody heck, do I sound like I care? You lot are all the same to me. Just go away! How many yokels are there in this backwater town? Do they realize people come out to these kinds of places because they're supposed to be remote and quiet? It's not that. It's just that not everyone up here in these parts feels comfortable with us leaving packages on their doorsteps. <sighs> I... I do beg your pardon. I... Yes, I am expecting a package. I didn't know you were from the Postal Service, man. Hmm. 
You didn't know anything about me before you started shouting. And yet, you did it anyway. All right, all right, I'm sorry. It's just... I've been under a lot of pressure lately from my publisher, as well as my wife. I do appreciate your driving all the way up here. And Lord knows I'll be needing those ribbons. Just please leave them on the porch and... Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Now, where was I? She threw the key in the lake. Then what happens? Christ's sake, she made me lose my bloody train of thought. No, wait, I got it. And then he says... Good afternoon, Miss Weiss. Good afternoon, Mr. Morgan. I wanted to let you know that today was my last day here. Oh, really? Will Frank be coming back then? That's all I have to say. Good luck. What's up? Okay, so this is going to sound like I'm 16, but I have these tickets to a really big concert tonight for Barry and me, and it seems the babysitter has just bailed on me. All right, so maybe the babysitter part doesn't sound like I'm 16, I hope. <laughs> anyway, it's Journey, so I'm like, I need to go tonight, and I got these tickets ages ago. And it's a long drive to Portland, so we'll probably be out all night, and I promise you I've called everyone and their brother besides. They're really good kids to watch tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Can I get a shortcut to the question? <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're totally right. I'm blabbering on R and I. Okay, don't freak out. You got this. All right, recap. Journey tonight in Portland. Got tickets. Sitter bailed. So I guess he figured out by now that I'm awkwardly trying to ask it. Maybe you could do me a huge favor and watch Grace and Max tonight. And I'm your only option? Yeah. Sorry to spring this on you like this, by the way. I tried to find you earlier, but you and your van are kind of hard to locate during the day. Listen, if you can't make it, don't feel bad. I mean, maybe I can try to get tickets for another time, you know? I'm sure there will be future tour dates in the area and stuff, and if not, I'm sure some other cool concert will come along soon. So I completely understand if you're tired or if you've got other stuff tonight. Okay, hey, it's fine. I'll babysit tonight. Oh my god, are you serious? That would help me out in such a big way! And I would owe you big time. Huge! No problem. So, what time do you need me? You're a lifesaver. As soon as you can make it. You don't have to bring anything. There's food, videos, even a cardboard replica of Apollo 11 with a set of matching helmets. You're covered. See you in a bit! Alright! See ya! Right. Who wants s'mores? Hey, 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 guess who's back? Frank? I'm so glad to see you again. I'm so happy to be here again. I guess Morgan didn't stick around to welcome me back. Good riddance. Hell yeah, that clueless piece of work. What happened the last few days? Well, what can I say? Don't mess with the big boys. I guess they didn't understand that some of my customers do a little more than talking about their cats. Are they criminals? <laughs> no, no, nothing that bad. Frank Coleman's no stranger to the high-stakes game. I've got lawyers in my inner circle. All it took were a couple of lawsuit threats. But Frank, isn't this all just really wrong? Nah, Meredith. It's just a bit of harmless fun. Okay, Frank, if you say so. All right. Time to get back in the saddle. Have a great day, Meredith.
interesting. Driving along the highway above the da -da. Hello? Friday delivery day. Well, just call me Friday delivery K. Okay, no, that sounded better in my head. <laughs> Someone's in a good mood today. Yes, thanks for looking after Max and Gracie last night. He were a real trooper for stepping in last minute. No problem. They were great. I appreciate the lie. <laughs> so... Were you singing when I came up here just now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, Journey is so good. Those songs have been stuck in my head all day. Yeah, but... Journey? I know, right? There's just so much cool stuff being created right now, you know? I mean, Journey was cool. I got to know them through Barry at first, but I tell you, if Prince or New Order ever came to Portland, I would sell my spleen for tickets. Still into music, huh? Oh, and I haven't even mentioned Cyndi Lauper, or Run DMC, or Stevie Wonder. And before you go there, I know you're probably setting up a joke about spleens and ham and organs right now. I would never. All jokes aside though, I spent half the concert thinking about how I haven't really focused on my own music for a while now. Kids, work, all that stuff. So much going on. And I mean, I love tinkering, but right now, I'm not sure I'm even creating anything cool or just, you know? Not even Barry is allowed to listen to my songs at this stage, to be honest. You never know until you put yourself out there. I guess that's true. I was thinking, I have a mixtape with some of my stuff, you know? Just something I've been trying out with my new synthesizer. I'd be honored. That's great! It's just something I've been playing around with. Don't expect any fireworks. And hey, don't tell me what you think yet, yeah? You'll be my secret special audience of one. So I can get used to the idea of an audience. Would this have anything to do with Sunday evening? Okay, don't tell anyone, but I'm thinking of performing a song on my new synth this Sunday. Holy crap, I just said that out loud. Dude, you are coming to the open mic, right? Of course, that's great. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But act cool, yeah? No one else knows yet. See you there. Sure thing. Back to my own journey for now. Haha. <laughs> nope, ignoring that. Bye now.
Robert. How are you? I was away for a few days on an urgent job out of state. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Here's the mail. Thanks. And likewise. Hmm. Priority mail from Town Hall. Let's see what they have to say this time. Dear Mr. Harris, on behalf of yada yada yada, concerning Environmental Management Act 1213, yada yada yada. Uh, wait. What? <laughs> Listen to this. We have decided to postpone the construction of apartments for at least six months. We hope this satisfies you as well as the many residents of Providence Oaks that contacted us with their unfiltered and enthusiastic comments. It worked. The plan worked. Wow, great. So happy for you, Robert. We need to celebrate this. Uh, how about tomorrow night? Steak dinner at Moe's or something else on me. Oh, I'd love that. Great. It's gonna be fun. See you tomorrow night, then. Gotta go now. The telephone troops need to know the assault can be abandoned.
the waxworms have arrived. Excuse me? I meant the package, Miss Weiss. It's my worms. For fishing. They're just in time. I'm taking a boat to the island this afternoon. Great. Have fun. Hey, you can tag along if you want, like your father used to. But I'm not helping you with any wax worms. Oh, really? Sounds like fun. Okay, we'll show up here at 4 p.m. sharp. So, is this a quiet day, or does it always take this long? Fishing requires patience. You've only been here for two hours. I'm afraid patience is not my strong suit. Yeah, there's a fine line between boredom and relaxation. I find it hard to relax sometimes. Fishing also requires silence. Bert, can I ask you a question? <sighs> Never mind. I'll stop bothering you. We ought to be heading back home. It's been a fine day, and I thank you for the company. Ooh, Kay's tape. Let's have a listen. today. Hmm. Let me think. The ma ma, -ma monster deal? Oh, yes. You are now talking to Steve Mitchell, CEO of a multi-million dollar enterprise. But before I continue my insufferable bragging, I have a thing or two to say to you. About you. 
You've been a huge part of the success of this company. And I feel this is just the beginning. We're entering the golden age of personal computers and we've got front row tickets. The past two weeks have made me realize that I couldn't have done it without you. And I'm going to need you even more in the coming years. So here's a new monster deal I want you to think about. Become a partner in the company for 20% of the shares and a significant pay raise. Significant. The only condition is that I need your commitment for the next five years. So there it is. Think about it and let's talk about it more when you're back in the office. This is a bit of a surprise. Just let it sink in a bit. I don't need an answer right now. I have to get back to my uh, million dollar lifestyle. Actually, no, I, I need to get cranking on lots of stuff. Talk soon, Meredith. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 4. No one screws better than the Carpenter's Apprentice. Old Mr. Nabenshu acted like he was an expert on the topic. What he's done back there is nothing short of astounding. I'd hire him for any job and I'd pay good money for it. I never expected that the fence he repaired would survive last night's storm. A postcard? From Angie? Miss Meredith, I am so, so sorry I haven't been able to see you. It's just that I've been swamped organizing my not-so-timely exit from Providence Oaks. I'm sure you understand. You've probably seen the foreclosure notice. That certainly helped expedite my decision to leave. Anyway, I'll be sure to drop your parents an address when I find a new place to settle down. Hopefully we could grab a coffee at some point. I'd like that. It was really nice getting to know you. I hope you found what you were looking for in Providence Oaks. I know I did. And for me, it wasn't Providence Oaks. Your mileage may vary. All the best, Angie. Happy Saturday, everyone. It's time once again for a... Positive or Today's verdict is from Cheryl. Hi, Jack. I went for a walk the other day and suddenly encountered a majestic stag. Ah, there's the mail. How's the photography coming along? Okay, I guess. I've been using the camera for a bit. If you can take pictures for me like you said you would, I can get this practice in. I'll get it done. Don't worry. Okay, please take some pictures and return it today. Interesting.
First, did these folks order? All right, I'll leave it on the doorstep.
Here's your mail. I'm busy. Okay, good luck. No, damn it. I almost had it. I almost fucking had it. Thanks for breaking my concentration. You're welcome. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible, absolutely horrible. Maybe you should try a different hobby. You know what? I can beat this damn game. And I'm not quitting until I have. Okay. Fellow Providence Okians, it's time once again for the sent in letters and announcements. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know. Hey, folks, just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right, claim your 15 minutes of fame, enjoy some well performances, and the usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening. And maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at Moe's at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. 
Well, you heard her, folks. And I'll be there, too, so you better not miss it. Back to the music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail carrier Meredith. Hello. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Ghost drivers? Yeah, you know, people driving on the wrong side of the road. Nope, haven't seen them. Okay, I was just wondering. Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. Uh, bye, Jack. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much. And so ends a week full of turmoil. Are you happy it's over? If the Angels hadn't lost to the White Sox, that would have made it perfect. How much would you have won? $876.34. You've been a nice payday, huh? We're playing each other again tonight. Should I change the bet? Let's see what happens. Maybe you're my lucky charm. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh wait, this was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you, but they still haven't found someone else for the job. So I guess you can have it if you want. Are you serious? Of course, and it's a great job. You know what? Think about it, and let me know Monday morning when you return your stuff. I gotta run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's your dad again. That was your time in the mail delivery business. Oh, hi, Dad. Well... It was okay. A nice change of scenery. Great, but not something you do for the rest of your life. Actually, it seems like they haven't filled the vacancy yet. They haven't? Well, you know what I'd do. Oh, hold on, Meredith. Let me guess. Mom wants to talk to me? Hi, Meredith. Sorry to butt in, but you're thinking about staying in Providence Oak? Hi, Mom. I'm not sure, to be honest. What are you not sure about, dear? Are other people involved? You know, any interesting, interesting ones, perhaps?
Well, there are some interesting developments, yes. Oh, there are. But are they really interesting enough to give up your entire career? I really think you need to think long and hard on it. Oh, hold on. I have a suspicion Dad wants to talk to me. Meredith, I just wanted to say, you need to clean the lint filter on the dryer every once in a while. If you never do that, it could burn the house down. Dad, do you care more about the dryer than my plans for the future? I'm sorry, Meredith. I sometimes suddenly worry about things like that in the middle of the night. And it's not about the dryer, of course. I want you to be safe. And I'm sure you'll be okay. I'll be fine. Don't lose sleep over me. Okay, Em. Take care. I gotta go. We're running out of coins again. Bye! I hope you don't think I'm a cheapskate for having dinner here. There aren't a lot of other restaurants around, and I'm pretty sure their food isn't better than Moe's. Don't worry about it, Robert. I love it here. Thanks, Meredith. You're such a kind person. Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Ladies first. Hi, Maureen. It's hard to pass up a juicy T-bone steak. Excellent choice, Meredith. And what would you like to wash it down with? Hmm. I think I'll have a... Coke. Gotcha. Robert? The usual for me, Maureen. All right, Robert. T-bone steak and a beer. Doesn't get any more lumberjack than that. Be right back, folks. Ashley, get the steaks out! Maureen's the best. Did you hear about the open mic night she's organizing? Yeah. Are you going? I wish I could go. Especially since I heard that Jack's gonna do a thing. Jack? What's he gonna do? Announce the weather for next week? Believe it or not, he's a very good ballet dancer. <laughs> you're right. And you're his stage manager. <laughs> no. He's into comedy. Would have loved to have heckled him. Oh well, this is a good week anyhow. Because you're sitting here with me? Alrighty, here are your beverages, folks. I'm afraid the food might take a little longer, as a certain kitchen helper thought the freezer was a good place for storing steaks. Uh, I really should get one of those microwave ovens to defrost them. You seem a little stressed. Is it the upcoming open mic? Why should I be stressed about that? It's going to be lovely. And you better be there, Robert Harris. Maureen, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. I did not just hear you say that, young man. Oh, by the way, Meredith, I need to steal him for two minutes. He needs to check on some wiring for me. Excuse me, Meredith. This is Maureen's jurisdiction. Have to obey the law. Mmm, that tasted so good. Thanks, Maureen, for the fantastic blueberry pie. You're welcome. It's my way of making up for stealing you away from Meredith. Ooh, I swear. She can give quite the stink eye if she wants, can't you, hon? Oh boy, the world would be boring without her. Speaking of, are you gonna miss your daily delivery round? Yes, I probably will. Must be nice here compared to the big city. Do you think you'll always live here? Nothing's for sure, but I like it here. I needed to change towns after my divorce. Everything and everyone reminded me of her. And how are you now? Have you gotten over it? But maybe I shouldn't bother you with the innermost feelings of a lumberjack. Maybe not. I mean, if you don't want to. Robert and Meredith, sorry to break up your conversation, but we're closing up early tonight. Gotta set up some stuff for the open mic night, and I can't use any peeping eyes. Oh, okay, Maureen. No problem. Let me get the check for you, so I can leave you two to your lovely evening. Can you put it on my tab, Maureen? 
Anything for you, darling? Do you mind if I pay? Or at least for half of it? Meredith, after all your help, this is the least I can do. So, yes, I mind. Now let's get going before Maureen gets her broom out. Meredith, thanks again for your help. I'm not sure what would have happened if you hadn't come here with your mail delivery vacation. You're welcome, Robert. I was happy to help you out. A little help goes a long way. Hope to see you around again. You too, Robert. Take care. But we're not leaving without a hug. <laughs> anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So he asks the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, wanna give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those stakes are too high. <laughs> this one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway, but all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, what car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens. <laughs> well, folks, wasn't that special? Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? Love it. That hairdresser did a great job. Thank you, dear. Pity it's quite the waste of time and money, seeing as how I can't stay for long. Really? What's the rush? You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced, and he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? I must admit, it. it's at least a little funny. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss to the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair, and now I'm here looking like a loser. I'm sure you'll beat the game one day. Don't give up on the dream. I can't play like this. But I'm going to work out a strategy in the meantime. Dear people, 
none other than our own Kate Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl, and I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. This does not happen a lot, but you have left me speechless. That was Kay, people. Another round of applause. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, it's good to see someone flourish, but I'd rather be home right now. Isn't it fun to step out every once in a while? Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Kay's place, Mo Kay's. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause. And have some drinks with us. How did it feel to be up there? Oh, it was so great to be performing again. It felt amazing. I'm all over the place right now. It was such a rush. I will definitely be doing that again. If they let me, of course. That was amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Em. It felt amazing. I was so super nervous, you know? Like, shaking and all that. I'm so glad it went well. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations! <laughs> that was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me like a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> but it feels good, you know? That's great. I am so proud of you, Kay. You really have made a great life here. Thanks, Em. I'd like to think so. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so... I just want to say... It was good to have you back these past weeks, Em. Really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. Promise you'll keep in touch? Whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course. And remember, time marches, marches on. on. <laughs> See you, Kate. Thanks. For everything. My lovely people! 
The time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end. Ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next, but I just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin. Let me thank you again for joining us, and there's plenty of food and drink to go around. I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. So, you had fun? I loved it. Jack was great. Good, good. Honestly, when Jack started telling those jokes, oh, I didn't know whether to suck him one or laugh out loud, you know? Oh, that man is something, all right. And what about Kay, huh? She was amazing. You said it. Oh, that girl is so talented. Oh, I'd give my big toe to be able to do what she does behind a keyboard. Oh, sheesh. I'm still thinking about your news about handing over the diner. Kay's place, huh? That was quite the bombshell. That's my style. I've mentioned it to Kay, yes, many times since Stan died. She probably thought I was joking half the time, honestly. I just want to give her the option. It's hers whenever she wants it. And if she doesn't, that's fine too. Yeah, but how do you make a choice like that if you don't even know what your own situation will end up looking like? Something on your mind, hon? I don't know. I'm feeling a bit weird about tomorrow. How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. We really reconnected, and I'm happy we did. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women, and if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, You've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around? Move back? I think I have a feeling. Yeah. Then you go follow that feeling, hon. Even if it means I'm leaving? Sure, hon. Listen. I'd love to have you around. You know that, but you have to do things because you want to, or because you feel you need to do them for yourself. You don't owe any of us anything. Thanks, Maureen. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Weiss. Take care, Maureen. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the Angels, just like you said, and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. So, the Angels will win this time. Okay, Meredith. Thanks. I'll go with that. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no. I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks... again. Oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But I understand. What are you gonna do? Back to my home, my job and my life in the big city. So I guess you're going back to the future, eh? Computers, living in the fast lane. Can't say that I envy you. Although it must be nice to live close to a major ballpark. Do you need a ride to the airport? Yes, please. I'd love to take one last look over the lake. All right, go grab your stuff and let's go.
So, here we are again, heading the other way. Aren't you gonna miss it here? Probably. It feels odd to be leaving again. I wouldn't want to leave this place, not for a million bucks. Well, wait, no, two million bucks should be enough. Do you believe money can buy happiness? That's a good question. Give me a big pile of cash right now and I'll feel real happy. And I'm sure it'll last a couple of days, but then it'll probably start to wear off and I'll be back to complaining about the weather before you know it. But it's probably nicer to complain about the weather when you're living in a big old mansion. Hey, what's this honking clown up to? Move out of the way, you lunatic! Wait a minute. That's Robert Harris. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulling over. Sorry about that, Frank. Hope it didn't scare you. That's okay, Robert. I'm a road rage veteran, but, uh, what's all this about? It's not about you, Frank. I need to talk to Meredith. Oh, okay. I'll go have a smoke. Hey, Meredith. This is gonna sound super awkward, and hopeless, and desperate, and probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Stuff like this? Yeah, you know, I'm a man, you're a woman, I like you. A lot. I didn't want to give in to it. I've been through a rough breakup once, and I didn't want to risk ever feeling like that again. So, what do you propose? That I just get in your car right now? I wasn't gonna propose, but yeah, Meredith, I'd love that. Why don't you get in my car? And leave P.O.? I'm afraid I wouldn't survive a week in a big city. So you wouldn't leave P.O. for me, but expect me to stay for you? Do you want me to beg? <laughs> no, Robert. Just... Let me get in and drive us to Moe's. Coffee at Moe's? And a piece of pie. Sorry for butting in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own KM. Sing.